hey, we're going to look at volume of a prism and cylinder. And I'm going to try and explain this, um, how it works, as opposed to doing, we're not going to do a lot of the math today, but we're going to show how it works. Um, I guess we will do some math, but um, I think that the, this, this will help to explain it. When you find the area or when you, you want to find the volume of a prism or a cylinder, first you need to find the area of the base. And that is going to be the shape that is the same on both sides of the solid. So exactly across from each other or they're parallel to each other, that's the base. So in this case, the base is not the bottom. And I think that leads to a lot of confusion. So the base in this case, or the area of the base, is a circle in the case of a cylinder. That is the shape that's exactly the same on both sides of the, the cylinder in this case, or the square here, a rectangle or whatever it is, that is exactly the same on the opposite side. All right. If it's a triangle that's the same on the opposite sides, then the triangle is the base. And that's the most challenging part of finding the area of the base is that we'll have equations for rectangles, squares, circles, triangles. But once you find the area of the base, then you can kind of move on. Knowing the area of the base and identifying what the base is will then lead to telling us the next step, and that's the height. The height is the distance between the two identical bases. It is not necessarily up and down. In the case of this cylinder, it's the distance from the two circles at either end. In the, dis in the case of the rectangular prism, it's the distance from, in this case, top to bottom. All right. Now let's look at our three dimensions. So volume is the space inside a solid. So we're finding on the base, we're going to find the square units. And you see that labeled here. I've tried to label them. Um, my lines don't line up exactly right. I apologize. I tried to, to make it work. But you can see that the squares are there. So the area of this flat base is six squares, or six square units. If we were using centimeters, it would be six square centimeters, right there. Now, when we move into three dimensions, we're going to take these six squares, and instead of being six squares, they're going to be six cubes. You see that? Because we're adding the height of one. So now instead of six, cube, six flat squares, we have six cubes. Or in other words, six cubic units. If we were using centimeters, again, it would be six cubic centimeters. And to find that, we would multiply the area of the base, those six flat ones, times the height every time we go up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stack those on top of each other. So when the height is two, we have six squares on the bottom. Now we have six squares on the top, or cubes, I should say. Six cubes on the bottom, six cubes on the top. So it would be six times two, which is 12. What about when the height is three units? Well, that's like three stacks on top of each other. Six, 12, 18. All right? Or in other words, six times three. So the area of our base, which was six, times the height. See how that's working? And the final stack here for this one, we have um, four, let's say centimeters, high. Then we are going to multiply the area of the base, which was six, times four, which will give us 24. If you were to count, have this in three dimensions, and count how many cubes there were inside there, that would be exactly what it is. So the answer for the volume of this is 24 cubic units or 24 if we had centimeters, cubic centimeters, cubic inches, cubic, whatever. All right? And that's how volume works. We're basically stacking. All right? We start at the, the area of the base and we stack. If the height's one, we multiply times one, and then it becomes cubes instead of squares. Now it's two layers of cubes, three layers of cubes, four layers of cubes. It works exactly the same with cylinders or with prisms on their side, we're going to do exactly the same thing. The first thing is we find the area of the base. The big challenge with this is that the area of a circle, you can't really draw it in, in nice squares like we did on that other one. All right. 
the, the area of a circle usually comes in some odd decimal. So we're going to say the radius of this circle is 1 centimeter. So we would use the area equation and do pi times 1 squared. 1 times 1 is, is 1. So the area of this would be about exactly pi or approximately 3.14. So in other words, if I were to draw the lines on this one, we'd get 3.14 squares. But now we're going to make it into three dimensions. So we know the area of the base is 3.14. Now we're going to find the volume of the cylinder. So we have a height of 1. And when we have the height of 1, again, we're multiplying area of the base times the height, 3.14 times 1, will give us 3.14. But it's no longer squares on the flat base, but now it would be cubes. 3.14 cubes would fill up this um, circular section. And if we had the height of 2 centimeters, we would multiply 3.14 times 2. You know, 3.14 cubes fit inside that one section. 3.14 more would fit inside of this one, giving us 6.28 cubic centimeters. And then our final one with a height of 3, the full filled in cylinder 3.14 times 3, so we would have 9.42 cubic centimeters. And that's how volume works. Again, the bases can be on the sides. It can be on an angle. doesn't really matter. You are looking for the shape that is consistent on the exactly opposite each other. That's your base. And then the height is just the distance between those two. And the volume is the number of cubes you can fill inside this thing in other words, the, the space inside there. Hope that that lesson was helpful for you. Have a great day.